we'll start off this conversation with uh, the matters of state capture, as has been termed over the period, and these reports of the forceful takeovers of lands and the reported resistance by some. The principal of the Ghana International School, Frank Amponsa, has expressed concern over reports of this attempted takeover of the school lands by some individuals. In fact, according to him, a group led by a man identifying himself as a chief superintendent with the police VVIP unit, a unit responsible for protection at the presidency, invaded the school's property with building materials, including sand and blocks. Eventually, we do know there's a statement that was issued by the presidency explaining how this said individual with that police unit at the presidency getting involved in all of this, that he was not there to, as it were, lead the process of the forceful takeover, but was rather doing his job of rather reporting these alleged encroachers who were f trying to forcefully take over this land belonging to the GIS, rather to the, to the countryman's police. This was a statement from the office of the president. No officer, agent, or assign has been directed to secure and or interfere in any matter pertaining to GIS land within cantonments. The said Chief Superintendent Ibrahim Opoku of the VVIP unit of the Office of the President did his professional duty by handling or handing over alleged encroachers and suspects to the cantonments police station when he chanced upon an altercation at the cantonment's barrier on his way from work. And then he says, the chief superintendent submitted his credentials at the police station as he is enjoined to do as part of standard operating procedure in such situations. And in light of the above, the office of the president has made a formal complaint to the Inspector General of Police or uh, to investigate the entire matter. That is what has come through now. In fact, uh, the latest that came through from the presidency on this matter. Well, the principal of the Ghana International School, Franca Amponsa Mensa, spoke to Ghana Web, uh, also saying what had been reported to him on this matter. T take a listen. Just about uh, two months ago, a gentleman came over, walked, came with langas. They were about the langas were about four. Them and asked them what they were doing. And a young man there, who apparently was a mason, said that his boss had come to show him the property much earlier, and mentioned to him that he wanted him to construct a wall. And that's why they were bringing the blocks. So we said, at first we thought maybe it was a mistaking kind of thing. Maybe the, the mason didn't quite locate the plots. So we told them that no, this was part of uh, land belonging. This was land belonging to Ghana International School. And so they should leave. So they left. And then we made a complaint to the cantonment police station they immediately followed up with a, a response. Their response team, rapid response team, I believe, they came here, assessed the situation, and one of their senior police officers gave us a number that if anything happened, we should call them. So we decided that, look, even if this was, assuming this was not a mistake, then we would need to just make sure that the gate was fixed so that people couldn't come in. And so we took a decision. We had a meeting on Friday, and the decision was that we will extend the chain link fence from the adjoining property so that we fix the gate, etc. But then on the night of Friday into um, Saturday, around 1.34 a.m., the security, so we, we beefed up security at the premises, even though somebody lives there. 
And then they, they, they saw a truck laden with uh, sand, a tipper truck, that was attempting to drive into the property. So they stopped him and invited the cantonment police again, who also got on the scene and, you know, trying to find out what are you doing coming here almost 2 a.m. with a truck. And then we noticed that there were two other people in the truck apart from the driver and the mate. One of them was the mason who had arrived two days earlier with the blocks. And so they resisted. They said they would not let them go onto the premises. Now, the number of the tipper truck was a GC2397-21. That was the number of the tipper truck. Now, while this was going on, they saw that uh, a Toyota Camry car arrived on the scene. The number of the Toyota Camry car was ER297-21. Two, three. And a gentleman got out from the Toyota Camry car, plain clothes, and he spoke to the policeman and asked that the sand should be allowed, they should allow the sand to be tipped. So that's the principal of the Ghana International School, Frank Amponsa Mensa. He's a private legal practitioner as well. And he mentions the names of the car numbers. That's the tipper truck number. And then the Toyota Camry with some individuals in there who were the ones who attempted taking over. And these cars are registered in the names of people. So this matter has been reported according to the presidency to the IGP to take this matter up. We don't have any update. It's been almost two weeks. We don't have any update as to whether these, the individuals who own these vehicles, this tipper truck and the Camry who pulled up and were actually part of this attempt to forcefully take over the land of GIS have been arrested or not. We'll wait for that update and any further investigation into this matter. But as a man who, who has some updates on this, Sam Lokuja Tuablakwa is member of parliament for the North Tongue constituency. He is the chair of the Government Assurance Committee of Parliament and a number of committees as well that he is on. And he is the chief interceptor. He's joining us in the studio. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good morning. For this Alfred. first part of the conversation. It's good to have you. Also, Yabwabea yeah. Samoa is a, a senior advisor to the Movement for Change leader former communications officer of the MPP, and then also a former member of parliament for the Adenta constituency, my constituency. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Someone? Thank you. Great. Now, so, so Blackwell, let's sort of, this, this GIS matter, and I, I mentioned the names of these, uh, the car numbers, because the, the principal put them out. What was the latest you have on it? <clears throat> well, good morning to you. Good morning to uh, my good friend, the Honorable Boabina Samoa, and uh, good morning to all the viewers of TV3. Kindly permit me to uh, extend hearty congratulations to my paramount chief in Bato. Uh, his daughter is getting married uh, this morning, and so uh, we'll Perfect. all be there to celebrate with them. He's also the vice president of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs. Tobega Patamia Jekle, the seventh. Uh, so hearty congratulations, uh, congratulations to him well. and uh, his daughter and uh, the groom-to-be. Um, <clears throat> so Alfred, we need to situate this state capture discussion in the proper context. Resources of our country, national assets of our country, belong to all citizens. It belongs to all of us. Under a rule of law dispensation, citizens must have the right not only to know how their state 
resources, state assets are being managed. Because remember that under Article 257 of the Constitution, we have only asked the president to manage these assets on our behalf. They are vested in him to manage for and on behalf of the people of Ghana. They actually belong to the people of Ghana. Under a constitutional dispensation, under a rule of law dispensation, citizens also have the right to enjoy their property Indeed. with peace, with serenity, with sanctity, and they should not be under constant harassment, inundation, as though we have become a banana republic, we've become a jungle where might is right. If you think you have political power, if you think you are connected to the powers that be, then you just take whatever you set your eyes upon. That cannot be tolerated. That cannot be a democracy. Mm -hmm. This GIS matter highlights the growing concern about state capture. How people who think they have authority have grown in impunity and are doing whatever they want with utter disregard for due process, with utter contempt for the people of this country. It's a really tragic situation that on the 31st of August at 2 a.m., will you believe that? 2 a.m. Yeah, the principal confirmed that. 2 a.m. If the security had not been alert and they had not called for reinforcement, these faceless characters will have taken over portions of GIS land. And if you have observed, a lot of this marauding gang who are on the loose, they are operating in prime areas. They are not interested in uh, land in uh, rural Ghana. They are not interested in undeveloped territories where you have uh, probably bushes, mm. you know, uh, where we don't have laid out roads and electricity and all of that. They only go there if they hear that there is gold, which is all part of the state capture, mm -hmm. you know. So prime land, very jewel locations are what have come under attack. Now, you need to bear in mind that this GIS matter is not an isolated case. Others mm -hmm. within the cantonments, airports, Laboni, Enclave have reported same invasions. Indeed, those who were not fortunate, like GIS, their properties have been demolished. And as we speak, no arrests have been made. The people are virtually heading to the courts. Mm -hmm. Now, if you also have a situation where for the first time in this country's history, the judicial service of Ghana goes to court and they list 13 bungalows they have lost. First on the list, number seven, Fifth Circular Road, which has generated considerable controversy mm -hmm. because that takes you to where Asasi Radio is. When you follow those court proceedings, which I have done, the government is not contesting at all. They are calling for an out-of-court settlement with the Chief Justice so that they can compensate the Judicial Service of Ghana. Can you believe that? That is how bad things have gotten, that the Judicial Service of Ghana has gone to court and they've provided the list here of properties they have lost. Now, back to GIS. The Ghana International so, School. But let me say, so the Judicial Service has a number of properties they have lost within that enclave. Yes, within that enclave. Cantonments, Laboni area. Yes. How many are those? In, in, the, you said the, this matter is in court. It's in court. There are 13 of them. 13. Yes. And indeed, the ministers for lands, works and housing, attorney general, 
and the Lands Commission have reached out to the Chief Justice asking for an amicable resolution of this matter out of court. I see. So that is how terrible the situation is. Let nobody think that state capture is an exaggeration. It is not. It is, it is, it is happening, real. So and and, and from... many more are beginning to recount their ordeals. Mm. Now, back to GIS. So it is important to emphasize that I am not the least convinced about the statement issued by the president. Why is that? They were very clear. And indeed, indeed, the president must come under heavy criticism this morning. For what exactly? The statement is in total bad faith. It is prejudicial to what has happened. Look, I have followed this matter. Indeed, I've had discussions with key actors. What they tell me is that the gentleman from the VVIP unit at the office of the president, Chief Superintendent Ibrahim Opoku, mm -hmm. was virtually supervising the operations. The invasion. But the presidency he, says he, 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 he did followed his job. You, have you read the GIS statement? Let me read the GIS statement to you. And GIS did not mean worse at all when they narrated what they went through mm -hmm. on that night. Really, really a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will I'll bring out that statement in, 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 in a jiffy. But in and, the, and the, the principal made reference to some, the, the said gentleman mm -hmm. leading a process. And then the presidency came out with this statement mm -hmm. indicating what this gentleman, the chief superintendent, was there to do. In fact, he says he was just driving by and saw what was happening, moved in there to go and ensure in doing his job, as was expected, rather got these people and, and, and reported them to the cantonment police. <laughs> That's the narrative in the, so, the president's So statement. this is a statement that GIS it says, at about 2 a.m. on Saturday, 31st August 2024, a tipper truck laden with sand drove to the gate of the property in an attempt to tip the sand onto the property. Mm -hmm. This was resisted by GI security and cantonment's police who had been called in. However, a plain clothed individual in a mm -hmm. Toyota Camry car with registration number GC2397 dash 21, insisted that the truck be allowed to enter the gate and tip the sand. Mm. This is the gentleman in question. And this is the GIS narration that he was actively participating, attempted to stop them and the cantonment's police, and insisted that the truck operators should be allowed to tip the sand. The statement continues. Two persons in the tipper truck were picked up by the Cantonment's police station. Personnel of GIS were also invited to the station. The individual, this same individual, mm -hmm. in the Toyota car also followed. At the Cantonment's police station, he gave his name as Chief Superintendent Ibrahim Opoku of the VVIP unit right. of the office of the president. In the morning of Saturday, an excavator was brought on the site to excavate the land in preparation for construction of a fence wall. This was resisted by the school authorities. The school management has taken steps to secure its property and warns all encroachers and any security officers that may be fronting for them to keep off its bona fide property. Mm. So this is the GIS narration. Mm. Now, President of the Republic, a direct staff at your office has come up in such an inglorious manner. Mm -hmm. You are calling for investigations. What do you do? You just say that, look, these matters have come to your attention. In all fairness to all sides, we are making a formal complaint to the IGP mm -hmm. for investigation. And you stop there. You don't have to take sides and present 
the narration that you have been told by Chief Superintendent Opoku as the fact. So you have virtually presented the IGP with a fair complete that whatever investigation he's going to do, mm. if the facts determine otherwise, it will be that he is embarrassing his boss, the president. Mm. So he would have to. And that is what happened in the Sicilia da Palmata. When President Akufuado accepted the resignation of Cecilia Dapa, his response was a romantic love letter exonerating her that, oh, my dear, I know that you have always been clean. You will be vindicated at the end of the day. Were you therefore surprised that all the investigative bodies from the OSP to Yoko to CID, all of them made such a bundle, such a, 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 a total mess of the situation. And as we speak, there has been no credible investigation and she's off the hook. Only this week, what has been the trending video? A gentleman cleared by the president by name Pius Hajide, parliamentary candidate of the MPP in a soja man. Cleared by the president. president told mm -hmm. us that, oh, uh, the man is quickly clean. He is not responsible for the Australia visa fiasco. And you know, the sad thing about all of this clearing that the president does is that we never get to find who actually did it, who the culprits are. So if Pius Hajide cleared, so who is that? Who did the visa racketeering? Took over 60 journalists to Australia. Brought us considerable international opprobrium, disgrace which has even affected our standing in the Committee of Nations. And a lot of embassies since then have even reviewed their embassy visa requirements. Total disgrace. Up to now, we don't know who did it. It was some people descended upon us from mass mm, and engaged in this visa racketeering. Now you have Pius Hajide confessing virtually. And this is a lesson to all presidents that when you clear people who are actually guilty, they will expose you. Now, oh, Pius Hajide is say, telling his constituent that, didn't you, I'm the champion. I'm the visa racketeering master. Didn't you people see what I did? Look at even the distance to Australia and the number of people I managed to take there. And then America. And he claims seven hours. I don't know what kind of, I don't know if he uses a supersonic uh, fighter jet to travel to the States. He says, okay. oh, America is just seven hours. I can, I can get you guys there mm -hmm. just as I did in the Australia visa scandal, exposing the president. And that is what the president is not learning. Look at this statement. Let me read this statement that he issued. I mean, it's in such bad taste. He says that we wish to place on record the following. One, the office of the president does not have any interest whatsoever in the piece of line in, in question. Yes. No officer, agent, or assign has been directed to secure nor interfere in any matter pertaining to GIS land within cantonments. The said chief is superintendent Ibrahim Opoku of the VVIP unit of the office of the president did his professional duty by handing over alleged encroachers mm -hmm. and suspects to the cantonments police station. Mm -hmm. That is contrary to what eyewitnesses have said, what GIS officials have said. And yet the so president would have expected the pre that the yes. investigation would rather exactly let the it, let the investigation of, establish. So. Exactly. Then it continues. It says that when Chief Superintendent Opoku chanced upon an altercation at the cantonment's barrier on his way from work. I mean, such ridiculousness. So at 2 a.m. he was leaving work and just chanced upon this. Yes, that's, that's what they say. Why should the president be presenting us with this one-sided conclusion? Then why, why refer the matter to the IGP for investigation? Why? Okay. It's totally needless. Totally needless. He said the chief superintendent submitted his credentials at the police station as he's enjoyed to do as part of standard operating procedure in such situation. In the light of the above, the office of the president has made a formal complaint to the inspector general of police to investigate the entire matter. Meanwhile, we call on the general party to disregard as mm -hmm. false any statements to the contrary. I mean, total hogwash. So what is the IGP going to investigate? Poor what? IGP. I pity him. The president has told you what <laughs> to him what his investigation has found out. Chief, uh, Chief Superintendent Ibrahim Opoku was only going home from work at 2 a.m. Then he chanced upon a situation.
It's been over two weeks that this matter was reported, at least, uh, made, be, was made public. Has there been any ar arrest or any updates in the take, investigation, as far as you do know? Take, because take, I haven't heard. Take this from me. Nothing will come out of this. Nothing, Nothing will come out of this? This statement ah. has prejudiced investigations. The IGP clearly has been presented with a fair complaint. Any investigation is useless. It will actually even be a waste of taxpayer funds with what the president has done, with this damning statement. Very prejudicial, very one-sided, throwing the GIS officials under the bus. So the president is telling us mm, that what GIS proprietor, the board chairman, the security, all of this, including the Cantumens police station, what they saw, what they experienced, how Chief Superintendent Opoku insisted that they should give way for these invaders to tip the sand. All of them are blatant liars. That's what the president is telling us. And you think that the IGP will have the courage to contradict the commander in chief? It's a useless exercise. Don't expect any investigations. And it appears, that, as you indicated, this is not a matter limited to GIS because my, my attention was brought to another situation of, of an 18 bedroom apartment building in Cantonments this cantonment's area where if this co-owner of this 18 bedroom apartment is accusing some unknown men of demolishing his property without a valid reason and they always come and say unknown men sylvester ishan is the co-owner of this 18 bedroom apartment which has been demolished as we speak and he spoke to join news this was like about a couple of weeks ago we we have that interview. Take a look at this. Just about uh, two months ago, a gentleman came over, walked, came with langas. They were about, the langas were about four. They, they jumped the wall, opened the gate and walked in and confronted the tenants in the house that they were going to demolish the house. So lo and behold, they called me from the office. I drove fast to the place. I met them and then I asked them what for? He said the place, means, the place is for him. I said, where are you coming from? He said he's coming from the office of the vice president. I said, listen, this is a private property. You don't have the right. Do you have any, any paper, any document indicating that you own the property? He didn't mind. So, in fact, there was that misunderstanding. So I drove him out of the house. Two weeks down the lane, at 1 a.m., dawn, he came with langas. They jumped the wall again with a bulldozer, broke part of the building. So I dashed down to the Cantonment Police Station and lodged a formal complaint. And all of these questionable operations happened at dawn. So this GIS one was around 2 a.m. The gentleman you just heard, Sylvester Shan, the co-owner of this 18-bedroom apartment. Think about it. 18-bedroom apartment which has been demolished by some unknown men. This operation also happened around 1 a.m. So the people showed up at 1 a.m. Yeah. All yeah. of this at that time uh, yes and look if 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 you have legal title what you are doing is above board why do you go at dawn 1 a.m 2 a.m on holy hour and why is it that you hide behind tags military personnel police personnel Look, there's another message which went viral within this same period. Quote, if anyone has property in the Laboni or Cantonments area, please be vigilant. Our families within a 150 meter radius are actively fighting. Four families, pardon me, four families within a 150 meter radius are actively fighting land guards. These are the, the cases I know of. A house on Sitole Road. Morning Star to Kofi Baku area mm -hmm. was wrecked two weeks ago and leveled on Sunday morning. Okay. The family owes no one, renewed their lease last year, and don't know the perpetrators. They had to have been at least 60 well coordinated people, armed policemen, armed tax with their faces covered, and a whole army of men on bikes who arrived, tore down the house, and hauled the debris in less than four hours. They claim to be from the office of the vice president. Just like this 
this this gentleman well, he's that has to, also who, been denied, is it not? It's one thing to see stuff like this in WhatsApp videos and a completely different ball game to watch it live. Mm. I had the opportunity to go through land guard documents last night. It is scary to see which agencies were involved. If I had seen those documents earlier, I would have given up in despair. The official documents these people have to seize and demolish people's property is scary. We are talking with the criminals. We need to get more organized and stronger. I mean, what's happening? And you see, don't lose sight of the fact that as we speak, politically exposed persons are still on rampage and are totally taking over a lot of these prime lands at very, very ridiculous prices. If you have followed my latest serialization, I have been putting out parliamentary oversight findings on the La Wireless, the cantonments area. Now, if you look at the history of that land, this is land that the colonialists acquired for the, for, for the state, the Gold Coast era, since the 31st day of December 1947. This land is approximately 92.49 acres situated at cantonments. President Kufour, when we were approaching the Ghana at 50 celebrations, mm -hmm. then decided that he will hive off a portion, and this is land that by 1957, the state had purchased the land for the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. You know, so the, uh, that's why it's called the La Wireless Enclave. Mm -hmm. So in 2006, President Kufour decided to develop about 30 acres called the AU Village mm -hmm. to host visiting heads of states for the Ghana at 50 celebrations. Then on the sixth day of September 2019, under President Akufuado, there was an announcement that the rest of the land, the remaining land, is going to be returned to the original landowners. That is about 61.7 acres. The records I have here from the Lands Commission reveals. So that was the announcement that they are returning the lands. It turns out that about 12.5 acres was kept off, taken away from the original landowners. Mm -hmm. And what has been going on? Politically exposed persons have been distributing that amongst themselves. The 12.5 acres? Yes, the 12.5 acres. And that was not part of the 60 that was reported. It was, yes, so they took that from the 61.7 acres. I see. Now, when you go through the documents, you will be shocked at how much these lands are being sold for. A plot of land, these politically exposed persons at cantonments, hmm? They were asked to pay only 183,752 Ghana cities. I've ordered That's documents. 183,752 183, Ghana cities. Less than 184,000 cities. For one plot. A plot of land at cantonments. Can you believe that? Meanwhile, go to the open market today. You'll be lucky to get $700,000. Not cities. It's between, currently, it's between $700,000 and $1.2 million. million dollars. That's for just a 70 by 100 size yes. land in Cantonments. Yeah. And, and politically exposed persons. You say politically exposed Paying 183,000 cities. And I've, I've serialized the list. Indeed, over the last few days, the governor of the central bank, who is on the list, says that what others have benefited. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he has done nothing wrong. Um, he intends to keep the land. I mean, incredible. He went through the process to get it. He's paid for it. What process? Look, one of the major challenges that the Ghanaian people have with this transaction is that they don't follow due process. They are never advertised. Never. Look, I have had top, top, top MPP officials 
who asked me that? Oh, this is where, where do they even sell them? Where, you know, ask some Abu Babia somewhere who is, who is closer to them than, you know, whether he, he, he ever even hears about this. It's not advertised. It is not open. It is not subject to, it, subjected to any transparent competitive process. It's not. And then look at the values. So the, the Ghanaian people are losing on all fronts. So we are losing the land. And already this is a country that we are struggling to find land for national projects. You had the president not too long ago in parliament mm -hmm. explaining to the country why he could not meet his agenda 111 deadlines. That land was a major, major issue. Mm -hmm. And yet, the few we have left, so we're losing the land, we are also not getting value for money. And if you look at the list, you can just tell what is going on. So the MPP women's organizer, K. Jimfua, purchased his from the president 31st August 2022. The then Minister for Tourism, Ibrahim Mohamed Awa, he also purchased his from the president on the 30th of November 2020. The governor of the central bank, Dr. Enes Yedua Desin, purchased his from the president on 31st August 2022. L.C. Adua Waji, the deputy governor, Purchase has 27 August 2020. Maso Pokwa Fari, the other deputy governor, 31st August 2022. Joseph Bwanhi Edu, the CEO of Cocoa Board. Purchase his from the president on 30th October 2020. Dr. Janet Ampedufo, future person of the Presidential Movements Committee. Purchase has 29 June 2023. Kwabna Mante Jack Tenyako, the president's uh, appointed board member at the Ghana Airport Company, 22nd October 2022. Ansem Ransford, Ajete Sowa. Purchased his 14 October 2020, Anna Sario Dro, former MPP women's organizer, Holland chapter, purchased his 25 February 2021, Ken Uforiata's uh, Enterprise Assurance, 15 December 2023, Kwesi Etuya, the president's uh, then appointed chairperson to, to the SIC board, mm -hmm. 40 October 2020, uh, Madame Georgina Wood, 15 October 2020. I mean, what is going on? What is going on? And you see, I have just moved to another enclave. And in the coming days, I'll be serializing that as well. And you will be shocked. Which enclave so, is this? I, mean, Even they? They, I, I, can, I can give you a hint. The new cleared and its land that was for uh, agri purposes, it's near the Elwak area. The, you see the Gifford Road? Yes. yes. You see that there's some mm -hmm. major developments going on there. You will be amazed. So, I mean, despite the outcry, the outreach, they are not even bothered. You know the other discovery I've made, and, and this is exclusive to you, uh, we'll be putting out the details in the next few days. Are you aware that somebody has gone to the Lands Commission to go and redemarcate the Ghana Trade Fair company lands? Ghana Trade Ghana Fair. Trade Fair. And we have lost 11 acres. I've seen some development going yes, on there. Yes, we have lost some. It's, it has shrunk. What belongs to Ghana, to the state, is shrunk by 11 acres. And it was done on the 2nd of September 2020. The Ghana Airport. Ghana Trade the, Fair. Ghana Trade Fair. Yes. We the, have the, lost the, 11 the, acres. The, the buildings have been demolished. They yes, they but, but the land. But the land. Project. Yes. We've lost 11 acres. I mean, look, everywhere, look, there are calls coming from Tamale, from Ho, from Sekendi, from Navrongo. I mean, you wonder what is happening. It's, it's, look, is Ghana not going to remain a state? Are we not going to have the need to develop? Are we not going to have need for land to build more factories? More hospitals, more schools. So 11 acres of the trade of fair the land. Of the trade fair land. Somebody has gone to the land. They've, they've done it. Yes, they've done it. 11 done acres. Redemarcation. Yes. Oh. On the 2nd of September 2020. Yes, 2nd of September 2020. And 11 acres. Gone. Nobody knows what. So they have to tell us what they are going to do with that 11 acres. So doing trade fair redevelopment project. That's what was communicated, is it not? And in fact, I drove by <laughs> not too long ago. I've seen some huge metals being put up on one part of it. 
and we are already asking questions as to what exactly was going on. You say 11 acres have been... Yes, 11 acres. Based gone. on your the records at the Lands Commission. Yes. I see. And this by an individual. Well, it's not clear who did it. Uh, they've, they've, done, they've done a variation. 2nd September 2020. Uh, 11 acres. I see. 11 acres gone. Mm -hmm. After this... this, this, this this variation that they have done. So it's, it's terrible what is going on. And that is why, look, in this matter, I think that we have not celebrated my colleagues on the MPP mm -hmm. side who are joining hands with me to sponsor the Protection of State Assets Bill. I want to celebrate them this morning. MPP MPs, Kweku Kwating, uh, the Honorable Eves Norte of Tema, mm -hmm. uh, Paul Chumberima of Doma, and uh, Dr. Aduma Kukisi, the Anyasu Utu MP, who, yeah, have joined, who, have, who have joined hands with me. Yes, it's a bipartisan bill. And uh, I must celebrate the Honorable Namomo, the Honorable Gakpe, you know, uh, and the Honorable Francis Xavier Sosu on our side, mm -hmm. working together on this bill. Because look, a new breed of politicians are saying that this cannot continue. There are some who are quick to say that, oh, let's go sometime in history, mm -hmm. 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And there are others who say that, oh, let us also allow this to continue so that when it gets to our turn, we can take advantage. We can also benefit. I am glad that increasingly we are seeing a coalition mm -hmm. of decent-minded politicians who are saying that, look, enough is enough. This cannot be allowed to continue. And okay. are joining hands to have legislation. And in doing that, let me also celebrate the NDC manifesto. I think I've looked at all the manifestos. The only manifesto that comprehensively deals with this canker is the NDC manifesto. And President Mahama deserves a lot of plaudits. He has said, one, none of his appointees, if you want to buy a state asset, don't accept an appointment. No appointee is going to be allowed. No government official, no politically exposed person. He stated clearly in the manifesto. He has said that he will pass legislation. So it means that these are private members' bill. If we don't even finalize it, there is hope that a Mahama presidency will sign this bill into law. And all state assets are going to be protected from politics. Because the research shows that if you take away the politically exposed persons, more than 80% of these state assets will be protected. Because mm -hmm. it's the politically exposed persons who have access. And you see, the unconscionability. You are giving these assets. Protect them for us. Protect them. Mm -hmm. Make sure they are safe for us. And then you, you, you are just taking them. Looting them for yourselves. <laughs> I am also excited. And, and while we round up on this, I want to ask a question. We could no, no, just quickly. Yes. Just quickly. You see, the manifest, then this manifest is also talking about a state assets registry. So that all our state assets are going to be published. They're going to be online. Everybody will know. Mm -hmm. Because you see, this whole state capture thrives under a culture of secrecy, of darkness. Do you know that since 3rd February 2022, we've been asking the lands minister, Give us a list of state lands. At least, what do we have left? More than two and a half years. It's been such a tussle, such a hassle. To know the list of the state lands? Yes. They the say ones they, left yeah. or the ones that have been sold already. Exactly. And it's, they, they can't tell parliament. So Almost three years. So after, we have been asking, Works and Housing Minister, we want the full list of bungalows that we have. Because under so-called Accra Redevelopment Policy, these bungalows are, are just going like that. Uh, even the judiciary has complained in judgments about how public servants, including judges, are being dislodged under the so-called Accredited Development Policy. Hmm. Will you believe that we don't have the list up to now? We, we, it, it, this country doesn't know how many bungalows. <laughs> Can you believe that? And yet, when it is time to sell, to do Accredited Development, to hive off portions to so-called private developers, we know where the bungalows are. 
This latest one you mentioned about the trade fair has generated a lot of conversation online right now. That 11 acres of that trade fair land already somebody has gone to, yes. to take it over yes. at the Lands Commission. And, and it, it, after all of this, you see, because you've, you've outlined a number of these cases and these cantonment lands sold for ridiculously low prices, 183000 for a plot. After this, what has to be done if, if this is wrong and, and in fact not accepted? What is the process to correct this misnomer that has happened? Because we've talked about it, we've, we've discussed it, but then what next? And that's the question that I'm getting from, from, from a lot of people. Even every time when you come, so after the expose, then what next? Zablakwa. So, very brilliant question. And from the work that we are doing in Parliament, it is clear to our caucus that we need a comprehensive national probe on all of these acquisitions, this land grab, which is happening all over the place. We need a commission of inquiry to look into it. Mm -hmm. And we are glad that incoming President Mahama has pledged that. Look, it must happen, and it must happen quick and fast. And I am also particularly delighted that Incoming President Mahama is talking about ORA, the operation Recover All Loot. So those who are engaged in this and those who are in the queue should know that the day of reckoning is coming. Right. Buyer beware. Because that inquiry, and you see, people think that it is far-fetched. They forget our recent history. Professor Mills did a similar thing. People forget. Mm -hmm. Where the foreign ministry is today, mm -hmm. Many people have forgotten that all those lands had been sold. Airport residential. Professor Mills came and said, look, it wasn't transparent, it wasn't advertised, you didn't pay fair market value, so mm. please come back for your money, all of you. So come there's back some precedence to that. So there's precedent. So those who are engaged in this, those who are engaged in this should know. And those who think that they can go and use that 11 acres of airport, uh, Ghana trade fair, trade fair land, mm, which has become available, and they should know that buyer beware. There is no guarantee that under these opaque circumstances, you are going to keep these properties. Okay. 